please. Yes. Spin. <laughs> spin. In today's video, we're building a large sit and spin. Okay, well, that's. This is our sit and spin. And now we have a gray sized one. <laughs> I fit on this one even, nice well, even nicely. Even for Grace, this is a little on the small side. Just a little bit. She can use it way better than I can, but still not, still not perfect. Close. There it is. Yep. So we have a small one. We need a big one. We're going to be trying to build a large size sit and spin for us to play with. Because it sounds fun. I think it's great. Here's the basic idea. We're going to build a large sit and spin, check out the mechanics of it and how it gets its spin, and we're gonna explore some different forces. I think it's best if we start out with taking this apart um, and getting our circles. So we know, so while I take this apart, if you wanna cut out our circles for the sit and spin because it has this one circle on the bottom and then it has this larger circle on top that spins, um, we need two of these. Two of what? Two circles. Yes. And then another one for the top? Yep. Okay. So a 30 and then like, we have a Lazy Susan piece, my bobber, hard, hardware, that's the word, <laughs> that we're going to use as our ball and bearing system that this has. And you wanted to make the entire seat 30 inches across. Yes. So we'll have like an extra three inches past the diameter of the hardware mm -hmm. all the way around which is going to be so fun. All right. Cool. So while Nate is doing that, I have sketched out the physics of our, this device that we're playing with, and I've sketched out what Nate needs to do so we can talk about how this thing all works as one big system. All right, so to understand the mechanics of our sit and spin, we need to look at the centripetal and centrifugal force. The centripetal force is the force necessary to keep an object moving in a circular path and in the inward direction. The centrifugal force, on the other hand, is an apparent force, meaning it's not real. That is the felt force by the object moving in a circular path, and it acts on the outward from the center of the rotation. Now, if I want Nate to be in a circular path, then we need to use a centripetal force, meaning he has to be holding on to the handlebars, and that's going to keep him with a point of contact moving him in a circular motion. So while Nate's moving in a circular path, he's going to have a force that he's feeling. That's going to make him feel like he's flying off and moving in a straight path. That's a centrifugal force. So when Nate lets go, bye bye Nate, <laughs> off he goes because an object in motion must stay in motion. So when we're on the sit and spin, we're experiencing both forces, a real force, the centripetal force, and an apparent force, which is pretty much a fake force. All right, let's get spinning. All right, guys, we have a 3 4 inch piece of plywood. <laughs> and this is what we are going to be using to build our device. Um, this is what you would use on a Lazy Susan to make a larger than life Lazy Susan. But we are going to be using this as a ball and bearing system to get us to spin. As you can see, the one that I have like held against my back, the inner one, isn't spinning. The out one, outside one is. So it's going to be cool. I'm excited. I am building a string compass to make our circles. So we're gonna have Sharpie. And then we're gonna attach the string in the center. And we're gonna use that as our pivot point to pivot. draw the circle. Pivot! <laughs> pivot! Pivot! <laughs> I want it to be 30 inches in diameter, so got a 15 inch string here. That's gonna be the main base, the part that I sit on. We also need a hole in the center of it for the control mechanism. That's the tower that sticks up, the light green part on our toy version. We are going to be using some ABS plastic and our three inch ABS plastic pipe is going to fit into this flange. And so I need a circle the size of this base part of the flange also marked out because we're gonna have to cut that hole out of the center. So it's gonna be that size. This is almost four inches. So if we have a four inch hole, that would work great. We would just barely have space to fit this through, which is what we want. We don't want a lot of clearance. We just want a little, a little bit. 
So while Nate is making his little loop-de-loops and making circles, I am taking this apart so we can check out the inside of this because some pretty cool and unique things are happening in here. So our hardware ring is gonna fit about right there. So I wanted the ring to be centered being inscribed inside our bigger circle. So I already had the center point marked. So I measured the diameter of the ring. I divided that in two to get the circumference. I measured that point from the center. I drove a screw into the center and then I wrapped string around that point and tied it fairly tight, which just gives me a radius of that distance in a loop. So I think that should work pretty well. While Nate is drawing those circles, we're gonna look at our circles over here on the sit and spin. So this is the part that you sit on right here. And when you lift this up, you get this really, hmm. you get this ball and bearing system that is in here um, and they just kind of like pop out. Uh, so people have created these online using marbles. Uh, you can do that or you can just do what we did and buy a Lazy Susan um, spinny mabobber hardware <laughs> thing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is really unique. This is what's giving us essentially creating a frictionless area that we can glide on top of and spin on. Um, what we're feeling when we're spinning on these surfaces are those centrifugal and centripetal forces that we talked about earlier. And those are super important in physics and it's something that we're experiencing and children are experiencing from a super young age on these sit and spins. <laughs> we want to see if we can move our inertia and make us spin faster if we're sitting on the outside of the sit and spin or if we sit closer to the center of the sit and spin. And so that is something we're going to test out on our larger sit and spin because frankly, we don't have enough space on the little sit and spin to get closer or farther out. <laughs> I'm learning something new. It seems to be like my training still that I'm, I learned how to use a circular saw the other day. No, an angle grinder. Now we're learning how to put on ABS cement. Apparently there's a technique in it. Yes, and it's gonna be the same thing that you do with other types of pipe glue. So okay. I'm gonna have you do it, so come over here. Ooh, so the, uh, the inside of this is gonna be a little foam ball. So what you're gonna do okay. is you can take that and you're going to paint all over the inside of this ring. Okay. About now you should be feeling it in your mouth and nose. Can you, you get in that at all? No. It'll get to you. It's gonna be a lot like the dentist office. It's got like that sort of like tingly numbing like the glue that they use. Mm. So all over the inside of this and then the outside of this. And then you're going to press it together and turn it 90 degrees. And then that's good. Wow. That was fun. Let's go! It works! Yes, it does. Oi, oi, oi. Grace, are you uh -huh. there? Yeah, I'm right here. You can feel on this one, I don't feel it so much on the little one. On this one, I do feel it pushing me out and wanting to throw me off, which is why it keeps wobbling. Yeah, you all, your, the all of your weight is on one side. Yeah. I'm gonna spin it. different direction of dizzy now. It really is. It feels like my body wants to like roll over itself. <laughs> You're doing great. Spin me.
How's it feel? Odd. It feels like you're flipping over yourself. Like when you lay down, it feels like you're going like. I was going backwards. Nate and I were holding on to this center post. Stretch, he doesn't have that ability. His arms can't reach it. Poor stretch. So when we spin him around here, he should, if physics works properly, go in a straight line and not continue around this circle. So we're gonna spin him, not enough force to throw him off. If we spin him faster, he can continue traveling in a straight line because he has nothing holding on to him to keep him in that circular motion. Centripetal force. That's all we got for you today. Make sure you click that box right there so you check out the rest of our awesome videos. See you in the next one. Talk to you then.